what was this like for you coming in the season and kind of your role changes at the last minute, or at least to us it was last minute, but taking over the special teams duties? Was it a pretty easy transition, having been part of that for a while? Yeah, it's, it's been a really smooth transition. You know, like I said, this is my third year here. And, you know, we have such a good core of guys, a lot of veterans um, that have just uh, been, you know, really helpful in terms of making it a smooth transition. Um, really happy with how the guys have responded. And uh, we're, you know, we're heading in the right direction. Curtis? What's been the biggest uh, challenge for you in adapting to having the whole gig now? I said this, Brian's no longer around here at the moment. What, what's that, what, is there anything you've had to adapt and adjust to as you kind of work through it? Uh, you know, there's some little things that, you know, there's a little bit more work to do. Um, but as far as uh, the approach, I've been taking it one day at a time. That's been my approach. Just focus on the next day, the next practice, you know, and then not, not look too far ahead. And so... Um, Again, the, the guys, the players uh, have been great. We, we got, a, you know, the, the three specialists that we have, uh, Dixon, Myers, Ott, have all been, um, you know, great. It, it helps when you have a strong group like that uh, as far as, it, you know, gives you less things to worry about. And then the core teams, guys that have really bought into their roles um, have you know have really been out there you know playing good ball and so at the at the end of the day we came into this season you know after you know looking at things in the off season you know with the number one goal of us to go out every week and play fast and physical and up to this point that's exactly what these guys are doing so um, it's been it's been really smooth as far as all that is concerned. Bob Condota. Um, yeah, Larry, the, the way Michael Dixon has been kicking the ball so far this year, I mean, it seems like he's kind of, I guess, totally back to where he was as a rookie. And I, I don't I don't know maybe if he ever really did struggle last year at all, but have you sensed any difference in him and kind of getting back to that or just, you know, kind of a thought on how he's kicked the ball so far this year? Yeah, he's been outstanding. He's really controlled the game, you know, uh, pinning him, pinning him inside the 10, uh, multiple occasions, uh, flipping the field for us. He's really in a groove right now. And it all starts with, again, the chemistry, that he has, you know, the trust he has with Ott, the snapper, the protection, you know, giving him the, the time to uh, be able to go out and operate. So it's a collective effort, but definitely he is, uh, he's been really impressive these first few weeks. And um, it's, the, it's the Dixon that, you know, we've seen here the last three years. You know, he's, he's a talented guy and he's, he's an outstanding guy to coach. Greg Bell. Hi, Larry. We talked to Bill Belichick a couple weeks ago when they were playing the Patriots. And you mentioned your long career there. And what motivated you to be a coach after playing so many years in the NFL? I think it was a natural transition for me. You know, when I was playing, I always kind of had, uh, you know, my my eyes on, you know, this would be the, the next step for me. And uh, I took a year off in 2010 after my last year with the Jets. And, you know, at that point, I was reaching out to some teams and, to see if there was any opportunities. And uh, fortunately, you know, Tom Coughlin hired me with the Giants in 2011. And so uh, it was something I always wanted to do as a player. Um, I had a high amount of respect for the job that the coaches I played for did. You know, I was fortunate enough to play for two of the best special teams coaches of all time, Mike Westoff and Brad Seeley, um, for my entire career. And so just watching them work and see how they handled the, their units um, I always kind of had that in the back of my mind is that's something that I would like to do. And so fortunately, I was given that opportunity in 2011. And now this is my 10th year coaching. It's crazy. I have, it's gone really fast, uh, but I'm enjoying every, every minute of it. And then how did it come about you got on Pete Carroll's staff? Uh, you know, just, um, just they connected with me when I was available. And I came up here and we met. Brian reached out to me. Um, we had you know, had connections through, you know, when we play each other or at the combine, but I really didn't know him on a personal level until we came up here and met and sat down with Pete and then the rest was history. Curtis? Larry, you haven't done it yourself for, for so long. What do you think makes the makeup of a, a, a core special teams player, like a Nick Valore that's been a part of this and Nico Thorpe who's been here for several what, what do you kind of have to be to be that kind of a mindset and, and excel in those sort of roles? Well, I think, you know, number one, you have to take pride in that role that you have. And those two guys that you mentioned, Belor and Nico, have carved out a, 
a role for themselves and, and they hold themselves up to a high level. And it's great leadership that we get though, from those two guys because it, it translates to the younger guys and they see the importance of this phase and how important special teams are and they see how you can make a career out of it. And so seeing those two guys do that um, is, is, is awesome for us as a group. But um, for me, it's, you know, you, you got to love the game. You got to play, you got to be able to play fast and cut it loose and just go out and, and love to go and run and hit people. To me, that was the most fun part of playing special teams was going out, running down the field and hitting someone as hard as you can. I mean, what better job is there than that? And so if you enjoy doing that, you know, you got a chance to be a pretty good special teams player. And then if you actually take pride in that role, you could actually carve out a, 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 a nice career doing that. Last one for Coach Izzo, Brady. Hi, hey Coach. Uh, nice talking with you. I'm just wondering, but what, what is your coaching style? What, what are the things that you emphasize? Do you uh, pay much attention to analytics at all? Just what, what, how would you describe your style as a coach? Uh, I, I look at it from, you know, both perspectives of being a coach and then I also try to put myself in the player's position and see things through their eyes as well. But the number one thing that's the most important thing to me is, is getting guys to play free and have a clear mind when they go out on the field and just cut it loose. And, and it's challenging as a coach because I, I, I am an attention to details coach in, in terms of that. But like my m number one goal is to give these guys the information that they need to go out and execute their job at a high level 100% full tilt, full time without playing, you know, cautious. Because I, I don't believe in that. I'm, I, I want an aggressive mentality in terms of our units. And so for me as a coach, I'm always just trying to instill that in the player um, and, and emphasizing, you know, the importance of just going out there and cutting it loose. And I think as a unit, the style of play that we've had here for a long time that Brian has instilled in terms of the Seahawks special team style of play, fast and physical, that translates to, you know, good core special teams units. And so that's what hopefully we're going to see this year, you know, throughout the rest of the year. Thanks, Thanks. Coach. You got it.